Okay. Good evening. This is Harold Watson, Zoning Chair of the Stratford Zoning Commission that now sits for a regular Zoning Commission public hearing and administrative work session on Wednesday, September 26th, 2024 at 6 p.m. The quorum for this meeting is four. I'll now call the following elected commissioners. Zone 1 Commissioner Linda Manos. Here. Zone 2 Commissioner uh, Ewald Joseph. Oh. <laughs> here. <laughs> zone 3 Commissioner, myself, Harold Watson, here. And Zone 4 Commissioner, Deborah Lamberti. Here. <laughs> uh, zone 5 Commissioner Len Petricelli. Here. Uh, we also welcome Jay Habansky, Planning and Zoning Administrator. Uh, our, our recording secretary is not here tonight. Jay is sitting in for her. We also have our zoning legal counsel, Patricia Sullivan. The public may only speak at the invitation of the chair during both administrative and public hearings. Today's public hearing session was advertised in the Connecticut Post on 9-11 and 9-18. With that, I call to order the regular public hearing um, and administrative session I ask that we take them out of order to start with the administrative session. Wave the rules. Wave the rules to allow us to do our administrative session first, and as we are waiting on, um, we are waiting on petitioners. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Um, okay. Now let's. Let's go to our, yeah. Move to accept the minutes from August 28th, 2024. Uh, Deborah? All in favor? Aye. Aye. You ask for if there's discussion, even though there won't be any. Uh, administrative <laughs> site plan reviews, nothing. CAM site plan reviews, nothing. Accessory apartment applications, nothing. Sedimentary and erosion control applications, nothing. Zoning enforcement complaints, nothing. Other items, 9-11-24 uh, open house debrief, Obser observations and general comments. And I'm gonna turn the floor over to Jay so that he can lead us in this. Uh, next meeting, regular public hearing, Wednesday, 10-23. Oh, right. Right. Blame Jay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I want to thank everyone for taking time uh, out of their schedules to have yet another meeting in open house. And uh, I thought it went really well. You know, you never know what kind of turnout you're going to get at these meetings. Uh, and we had. Uh, at least 34. I know there was a couple folks who didn't want to sign in, um, so we probably had a few more than that. So uh, 34, that's a really good night for a public hearing, uh, especially, I'm sorry, for an open house, uh, especially when it was a beautiful night out. And um, so I'm really happy about that. I want to thank you all for being there, Attorney Sullivan, uh, as well as my staff and SLR, who I thought really did a fantastic job, uh, you know, helping to facil facilitate conversations. And I hope you all had an opportunity to kind of listen to what you heard from the residents. Uh, and, and, and hopefully, we, what we hope is that you were able to uh, take some of that feedback that you heard from residents and um, help let that help you guide your decision as we look to adopt uh, some of these new zoning regulations. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I want to let you all have time to kind of digest this document. This document really just talks about some of the data that we collected, but, um, and I'm happy to go through it, but I think it might be more beneficial to have you all kind of go one by one um, and kind of tell us, was there anything that you heard that was interesting, anything that surprised you, uh, anything that maybe uh, changed how you thought about some of these things that we're talking about? Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll save my comments uh, after you all speak and um, if, if you would like to give me the opportunity to do so. So 
I will turn it back over to you all. Well, let's start. Anybody want to start with any comments? Deborah? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, my only comments, well, aside from like some political stuff, which I didn't think was appropriate. However, um, my only comment was there seems to be two schools of thought about um, affordable housing. Somebody approached me and said, my daughter needs to move out and there's nowhere she can afford to move. And then other people don't, don't want any like multifamily housing. You know, so that was what I was able to glean from, you know, my conversations. Can I comment, which puts us in a very, it's a very interesting predicament. We want housing for family members, but we don't want housing in our town. Yeah. And, and having been on representing zoning on this Stratford Housing Partnership, that is the issue, that, the primary issue that's been argued for the last year and a half on that committee. The, that exact, we need this housing in order to keep our young people and our old people living here. We need affordable, that's why, what makes it square feet equals affordable. So we need to find a way to do that. At the same time, there are people that just don't want it. They don't want to see the change. And that is kind of a modern day, not in my backyard kind of attitude. But I, I, I think by your say yes, they yes, they only really come out in, in your backyard. I think maybe, yeah. I think Nine maybe the, maybe a majority of folks, and then then you've got the folks who really pay attention to everything and everywhere. Um, but I think you certainly will motivate people once you start uh, heading into their neighborhoods or uh, affecting their bottom line. And I think that's that's I think that's natural um, that. You know, once you see things coming into your neighborhood, your defense your defense goes up. So, you know, I think this is part of a, uh, you know, we want things to change, but we also want things to stay the same. And we all know that that's just not a realistic, it's not a realistic uh, end result. So, um, you know, we have to, I think you all are tasked with the decision on a monthly basis of that very thing, you know, how do we preserve Stratford's identity as a small town, charming small town, um, while doing its fair share and providing housing, or stable housing for people, which is one of the most important factors in somebody's happiness and success in life is stable housing. It's so important. If there's any good part of all this, Stratford is not peculiar in, in that notion. It's the same way everywhere. This battle gets fought in every single town across the country. So what we can do, someone can give me back my pen. Okay. All right, okay, no, 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 it's, it's fine. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's my one of my favorite pens. Sorry. You signed it? Yes. Here, I'm gonna pass it down, let you two sign it. Then I could yell at them for taking my pen. <laughs> yeah. So I heard the same thing, uh, Commissioner Lynn Birdie. And it's a common struggle, just like Mr. Chairman mentioned, is I think people want and know they want to do the right thing, but it's hard to do it. <laughs> and if I can, on the whole committee of the housing partnership, it probably started at about 50-50 in terms of how people would have weighed in on that. By the end of it, we probably were nine to one. I mean, nine to one out of our 10 members. So it did change after they became more educated. 
when they started looking at the, the numbers, the age, the number of seniors, the number of, of kids that are going out on their own, when they started looking at all those statistics for Stratford, it be they became aware of why we need this. So I think it's still just a sales job that we have to keep making. And I think that this board, every crop of zoning commissioners that I get, evolve, has that same evolution as well. You know, it's easy to say no affordable housing until you're up here looking at a room of 100 people saying yes, saying no. You hear the, the, the applicant's attorney telling you, hey, you can say, listen to everyone in the audience as much as you want, but the state law says you have to do A, B, and C. And I think it's this, uh, you know, it's a, it's a real w awakening that you have when you realize um, really what authorities y you have in saying yes and no to these projects. But I, and you all are also going to these housing trainings where you're learning more detail about the housing crisis than your average person who um, hasn't had to try to rent an apartment in 15, 20 years. And they, they tend to forget about where they were when they were 25. I lived in several three-family walk-up apartments. Probably a couple of them weren't even legal in my, tw in my 20s. You know, I couldn't afford a single-family home. And, and, and but the price of that apartment in Stratford right now starts at $1,200. Yeah. You can't find anything cheaper than that. That's so really that, and yeah. that's really cheap. That's why they come here instead of elsewhere. But that, if you take that over the year, at that is not 30% of the average young 20-somethings pay monthly, a weekly pay. It doesn't work out that way. And, and, and not every resident really gets the opportunity to really dig in and think about these things. You know, I, we probably think about it more than your average person where we were housing-wise when we were in our 20s because we, we talk about it here. Um, and, and the need for the wide variety of housing uh, to allow people to live here and to go to our schools and to patronize our restaurants and to go to the grocery store. Um, so I think you all are much more hardwired into understanding these things and, um, than you were when you started on your first day here in the Zoning Commission. Just like the housing partnership. Agree, absolutely. Um, I think always that what we've done, I think, particularly in the rewrite, we've tied the idea of ADUs, at least, to home ownership. So essentially we're asking the, home, the homeowners to maintain their own property values, to not do something that's going to destroy their own property values. So I think in a way that's created a little bit of a safety net for us um, versus if we were to you know, buy a, a half acre plot and put it three or four, um, you know, that's gonna be the other option that we're gonna have to face and we might probably have to do both. But in terms of obtrusiveness into a neighborhood, an ADU is less obtrusive than is a three or four apartment building you know, jammed into that same neighborhood. That is going to be more obtrusive. Um, Especially when you understand, when you start to realize the cost of building an ADU. I mean, I think there's a perception that if the town was to approve attached or detached ADUs to anybody, that it is going to be this flood. They're going to be everywhere. Every house is going to have an ADU in the garage. But when you really look at the cost, I mean, you're looking at Seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars to run a sewer connection, to run, to run power, to run plumbing, to to completely fit it out with the bedrooms and code and electrical. Um, it's just in all the other town. I shouldn't say all. I've, I I reference Fairfield because I speak to their st staff because they they adopted some of the things that we're proposing. And uh, they said there just wasn't that flood of applications that 
there's a perception there will be. There were five people who have been clamoring for it for 10 years, and they were the only five people to apply in the first year that they had it. Well, look at how many people we have gotten in the last year and a half. It's, what, it's probably about five. In terms of coming before us for approvals, it's, I, it's, I'm guessing, but it's got to be close to five that we have seen in our, in our turn at the, on the board. And we would get more, but there are people living in these units already. And so if we're able to legalize these, well, there's, an, there's another benefit that the town is getting from a, additional tax revenue once we know there's a legal ADU in there and it's done everything the right way. And, um, but it's actually providing the house housing in a more safe way because now we know that the electrical's been inspected and the windows work. Um, so. And I think that the state is going to more and more have a list of what makes a town working for affordable housing. What is a town doing if, we, if they are ever going to be able to fund us or give us a funding stream? They're going to look and see, is the town doing all of these things? So this is another item in the list that the state's going to say, does Stratford deserve our funding for more affordable housing? Are they, are they making an effort? So I think, in a way, we have to keep ourselves competitive with other towns. And, and what I'll add is, you all know planning and zoning. It's not an exact science. What I do know is no matter what we adopt, it is not going to solve the housing crisis. But it's going to chip away at it, and it's probably going to make an impact here um, at, the, at the local level. So. Um, regardless of what we decide. It will impact things here in, in the town. So um, were there any other, um, any other interesting observations that anyone had? Um, something that, anything that surprised you as you listened to what folks had to say? Uh, Attorney Sullivan, I know you, you I heard you, you were guiding and facilitating conversation uh, as well, so. I was very happy to hear that. Um. Could we hear from our? I, I, I'll add. Well, no, no. I'll, okay. I, I would. I would appreciate it. I, I mean, I thought it was very well done. I thought the conversations were really sort of flowing. We had a lot of conversations with, that were, you know, sort of tripartite with the commissioner and myself, and and some, you know. So I, I thought it was great, um, and I think the people who were there were engaged. Um, but um, I, I think, you know, Jay is also right. This, this, the affordable housing thing is really sort of the elephant in the room. So um, I think that's something that, you know, needs to be um, addressed. But it's, it's a difficult problem. Um, and the, with land being so expensive and um, with, you know, it's, just, it's difficult. I, I heard and I was surprised, what I was surprised to hear is there was overwhelming, and you never know, just because maybe it was the demographic of folks that just happened to come to that meeting, that open house, but I would say an overwhelming amount were in support of detached accessory dwelling units because of the flexibility, if you have the, the money to, to establish one of these, the flexibility that allows pe people to stay in their homes potentially live with family, potentially have just a renter, or rent out the main house for more money and live in the ADU yourself. And so I think as one of the older communities in the state of Connecticut, and we are one of the older communities in the state of Connecticut, that's a real, even if we don't get affordable housing credits, you know, the credits through the credit system for these, that's making quality of life better in Stratford, I think. And so I was really surprised to hear how many folks were in support of that. Um, the other thing I was really surprised to hear was um, the encouraging of the 
multi or the affordable and workforce housing and more in multifamily dwelling units in town so they said hey look we understand what i heard was we understand that you have are going to have to probably build some more apartments in town and if you do they should all be deed restricted they should all either be deed restricted by affordable and you should require maybe not the state requirement of 30 percent but fifth half of that 15 percent and or they have to be 50 percent workforce housing units which are a little bit more expensive than an affordable housing unit but um, the town gets those credits as, for those um, and they're still less than a market rate unit so i was surprised to hear that because you never know where you're going to get multi with the the lightning rod of multifamily housing some folks are just completely against it but i heard less opposition to that than what i was expecting um, so those were my two major op my two major observations having spent most of my life in marketing that's an issue that needs to be marketed we need to keep educating stratford people that it's their old folks and it's their kids that are grown becoming adults that need this housing. And the more that we do that, the more we get buy-in. It's that simple. The more that we get examples in the community that are legal, mm -hmm. that, we, that someone can actually say, oh, here was my solution. I didn't have to go to the nursing home. You know, those kind of things make huge differences. I'm in my 70s. I, I think about that all the time. You know, is my daughter gonna move in with me or am I gonna create an ADU for me in the back so I can get away from her? Yeah, that's exactly, no, that's a, I never thought of that before until I started thinking like, my daughter's gonna move in with me, I have to put up with her every day? Oh my God, this is terrible. So I now keep, keep thinking I could put a wall up right there and say, your part is my part and it would be perfectly fine. And so Mr. Chairman, I know um, Robert, uh, Robert Collins, our consultant, who really helped uh, us enact our vision for that open house uh, wants to go over this debrief at the meeting on November 30th, which is, I'm sorry, September 30th, which is next Monday. Um, so we don't have to go into a ton of detail over the whole night since I believe our applicant is, is here. here, sir. Looks like it. Mr. Smith. Yeah. All right. So the, the commission graciously took the items out of order, hoping that you were stuck in traffic. So we're going to get back to you in just a few minutes. So, um, but I know Robert wants to go over and debrief some of the data uh, from that meeting with you all. So I thought it was just a good time to kind of informally talk about anything, anything that surprised you, unless there's anything else. That's going to be the primary function for the 30th, to go over this. We'll be going over this. We'll be going over the, um, the final decision. Uh, uh, judgment calls that we guidance that we need from you all mm -hmm. on, a, on a handful of items there might be four that the four that we identified yep. as big items that we need to discuss and then to go over the final timeline for adoption what we're hoping uh, and then any just general discussion that you all may have so I was thinking maybe two hours okay maybe a little less maybe a little more but it, this is the only thing on the agenda it's a special meeting just for this okay so I mean, that Jay is not too cranky from his, you'll have done your surgery. Yeah, I have my surgery on the, t on the 8th, so uh, 8th of October, so I'll be all right. Okay. <laughs> but I, we would have loved to have given a little bit more time and maybe had this meeting a week or two later, but I don't want to throw off our timeline too much, so I want to get this done uh, next week. I appreciate everyone trying to be there. But Jay, it's still, zoning is making the decision when to turn this in. That's absolutely correct. So if we discover we have something that we really need to talk about more, we can always ask Jay to hold off. And we can ask him to hold off on one section, and they can move ahead with everything else. In the worst case scenario, that one section would go in in a un incomplete or wouldn't go in at all into the new zoning. So there are alternatives that can be explored. That being said, and move that we go back to item 1475 Holly Lane. Second someone? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
We are now going to open the public hearing portion of our meeting. I'll go back over it again. Uh, this was advertised on 9-11-2024 and 9-18-2024 in the Connecticut Post. Uh, our, the Zoning Commission now sits open for a public hearing for, those that, for that petition advertised to be heard. Uh, be it noted that, for the record, that da, 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 no, I wish to announce that should any item on tonight's agenda, should this item take more than the anticipated time, this public hearing may conclude at, 11, at 10 o'clock and be continued to another date, which it shouldn't. Um, is the petitioner or representative present, Mr. Smith? Uh, do you have uh, name or address certificates? Yeah, okay. 475 Holly Lane, petition of James Smith seeking special case approval to establish a restaurant in the CF zone. Okay. Do you have any certificates that need to be turned in? Uh, certificates? Uh, certificates of mailing, the proof that you have sent out your, your, the, uh, uh, the letters to your name, the abutters, or that they, that the public hearing uh, is being held. I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've been out for a couple months. <laughs> I had three surgeries, and so one of the guys in my office handled all of this, and I'm just kind of coming in. But I, I, he sent me a package, and uh, I'm, I know that all of these things, I thought everything was done and then filed with the board. I thought so. Well, Mr. Chairman, my recommendation is that, um, you know, you all, you all have the authority to allow the applicant to continue. Uh, there's no state statute requirement that these letters be sent. The only state statute requirement is that the sign be posted, which we do have proof that the sign has been posted at the property. And if an appeal comes, the applicant is proceeding at their own peril. Yeah, he has, he has in here a copy of, of the a sample letter. I, I assumed he, that he had sent these out. But. You, why don't you give us that for now? Okay. It's just, it's just probably your blank sample letter. Oh, if it's blank, then that yeah. doesn't do anything. Yeah, we have that. A, um, well, we can also approve it or not approve it and simply add that in as a requirement. Oh, okay. That would work, Jay, correct? Not really. I mean, you'd be the condition that they let them know and come to a hearing that's already been approved. I'm not okay. sure that's it. What, what I think, and I think Attorney Sullivan would agree, is that it's not fatal to this application and it's your all decision whether or not you feel this is a benign enough application that uh, I don't think we have anyone uh, if, based on the state <laughs> statute required sign the, that was and posted. And it's a commercial property in within a commercial property. Yeah, based well, let's on, quickly, I would say go forward. Let's based upon the fact vote. that there's a big Y there, there's really no let's, residence. Let's just make a quick there. vote. The motion. We can right. motion, motion to go forward without, without, the, without the certificate. Correct. Anybody second it? All in favor? Aye. Right. So we're okay then. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You may now start. All right. So uh, any, anyway, I, I, you all have seen the the application. I think I'm, I'm. Can you turn on your mic? Is your mic on? You just have to speak closer to it. Or pull it. How's that? Much there we better. go. So uh, uh, I, I think it's one of the simplest. I've, I've been doing this for like 35 years. It's one of the simplest applications I've, I, I've done. Uh, and I think you, I, I brought some drawings, but I think, do you, you all have the, the drawings in your packets? So my we, we did get drawings. easel and all that, I don't think is necessary. Ba basically, we're not doing anything to the exterior except just changing the sign. And there's a, there is a colored uh, elevation of what the sign looks like. And of course, that's a se that'll be a separate uh, sign permit anyway. And uh, we just, uh, are putting a, uh, a restaurant into a, uh, so it's a change of use, was a uh, Weight Watchers and we're proposing a tropical smoothies restaurant. I don't know if you've ever been into any of those. They're quite nice inside, uh, but you know, as, uh, as far as impact, you know, for a planning and zoning matter, the fact that we're doing nothing to the exterior except changing the sign sh should make it pretty simple. And, uh, there's no drive-through or anything like that, so uh, 
You know, I, th I think it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> I don't even know, I'm not sure what to say if you have any, any questions for well, me. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and I just want to clarify for the commission that you are not considering the signage. You're not approving the signage, you're approving the use. Signage is approved uh, uh, by, by staff administratively, or if they don't meet the code, then they have to go for a variance. Okay. I have one question for you. Uh, in your removal blueprint here, you talk about the sprinklers being removed. Uh, just relocating if there's any heads that, that uh, are too, uh, to are look too at low. the plan. Uh, if there were any heads that are displaced because we're adding a partition wall, or, and I don't, I don't even think we are, that's, that's all we're talking about. So you, about. you will still have sprinklers? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. because you don't say that. In, and I think you're right. allowed to move a head or two. I, I, I understand. I just want to make sure that that was yeah. the case. Because oh, on no, the we're... drawing that follows, I don't see any any uh, sprinkler on the drawing anymore. Yeah, I don't think we're, we're the intent is not to disturb. My assumption is the fire department's going to say you have to have this. Yeah, the intent is the not to disturb any sprinkler heads. Okay. Uh, that's my, oh, I have one more question, which, but I'm gonna open it up to the rest of the, go ahead, Lenny. No, you're right, Lenny, you're right. Uh, Deborah? 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 Ewald? Nothing? Nothing? Okay. okay, I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna go to my, I'm not gonna request this, but I'm going to suggest this. We are trying to get bicycle use up in our town if you have room on your front porch, which looks like you do, mm -hmm. <clears throat> could you add a bike rack? Absolutely. I'm okay. speaking for the owners. <laughs> I'm not even going to put this in as a condition. I'm going to say I'm, this I'm sure they would, owners would have no problem with that. We will so. allow it. Yeah. If you will put it in, I'll drive, I'll drive bike traffic okay. your way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bike I mean, bike. Not motorcycles. <laughs> and that's my, those are my only comments. Actually, I thought, you, I thought your drawings were very good. Well, thank you. He will. Um, <clears throat> I don't, I'm not sure I understand. Um, what is food that doesn't require commercial food? What does that mean? I'm sorry, what? Food that does not require oh, what is the food? commercial hood. What does that mean? I mean, if you have a restaurant, you're preparing food, you still have the hood. Yeah, the it's, hood. It's, a, it's a very limited uh, food menu. They just introduced it, as a matter of fact. It was just all smoothies, so it's just some healthy sandwich, like wraps and, and things like that. Simpler style. Yeah, it, yes, very, very similar, very limited menu. Some just healthy wraps and things. They're, they're not snow like burgers or anything like no that. No burger, no. Uh, no grill. Okay. No. No grill. Okay. No. I got you. But you are assembling them at this facility, correct? They are what? They are being assembled at this facility. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I could get you a menu or something if you want. If you wanted one, but. but I'm okay. I'm sorry. What? Thank you. I will. <laughs> Maybe not till springtime, but I will. <laughs> Anybody else? There, <clears throat> there's no drive-through and other thing necessary, so it's inside, right? No. So okay. Anybody else? Jay, do you want to make any final comment? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I think. Anybody want to speak in favor? I don't see anybody here with their hand up. Anybody want to speak against? <laughs> I, I I've never played to, never played to a 100% empty room before. <laughs> Motion to close the public hearing. Uh, second it. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Habansky, nice to meet you. We've had many, many emails. I have to put a face with the. <laughs> a long drive for a short meeting. Oh, All right, fun. safe drive home. Good health to you. I just made a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing.
and to go back to our administrative hearing. All in favor? No discussion. We've got to go back to it. You what? You want to discuss this? We we can no no we're going we are going to discuss this. Any discussion? <laughs> no dis hearing no discussion. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay, now we're back. We need to open the administrative. Reopen the administrative. So I'm open to reopen the administrative session. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're back in administrative hearing. Okay, we're back with Jay. I can move to take Holly Lane off the table. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Debbie did. Ewald. No, I, I oh, Ewald did. No, Ewald seconded. Ewald seconded. Oh, uh, we're going too fast for Jay, sorry. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, take it off the table. Motion to take 475 Holly Lane off the table with approval. Okay, discussion. Nope, we're all ready? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero, Jay. You got an eight, Jay. Because Jay just got enough room to off the table. I did. Linda. So I think we are done. Motion to adjourn. Well, why don't we first yeah. make, let's, re, let's just go over our schedule one more time. Monday. Yes, but then I, I'm going to need to close. Monday, <laughs> this coming Monday is our special meeting, yes. and then we have our regular meeting following. Right. Uh, I don't know the date. You want me to? Yeah. Are we going to have a meeting on the um, 9th? Probably. So, so, no, there's no regularly scheduled meeting uh, the second week second Wednesday in October. Which is the ninth. There's just the, we're meeting, we have the special meeting on September 30th, which is next Monday. And then we have our public hearing on October 23rd, I, or 25th. Uh, let me just double check to confirm. Yeah, it's the 23rd. That's the one that I was The 23rd, about. yes. The 23rd is our public hearing. And so depending on how things go over the next few weeks, uh, at that point, maybe we have uh, a set of regulations to adopt. Maybe not. Maybe there's more discussion. Um, we'll see. The regular October meeting is a public hearing. Is there going to be any petitions on the agenda? That would be the 23rd. For when? Uh, you, he 23rd is the end of the month, right? Our normal meeting? The 23rd is the end of the month regular meeting in October. I, I'm thinking that it's maybe that night you may say, AJ put together the text, the, the, the zoning regulations for a formal adoption, maybe. But Jay, can we, will that give us time to actually sit For the next meeting reading. in November. Oh, okay. You're giving me the instruction, maybe. And you're giving us the document, and then we're going to In November. Okay. I'm, That's fine. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. That's uh, November 20. Jay will be back in perfect health, and we can run him right. How does it look for the 20? Do we have any petitions yet, or no? Uh, so we have one and they were supposed to be on the agenda tonight. Okay. They couldn't come. So, uh, it would have been kind of worked out well if we didn't have anybody else, but I, as of right now, it's a very light agenda for next month. So things are lining up well, I think. I am done. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? I will see you on Monday. Huh?